Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my adorable co-host Teddy and today I'm bringing to you a very interesting video. It's the new KB Lake X i7 7740X, this big guy right here, going up against its uh, sibling or twin brother, some might say, the KB Lake i7 7700K. So let's get right into it and talk about the differences between these two CPUs. So they're both quad core, four core CPUs with eight threads. They both also have the same turbo frequency of 4.5 gigahertz and both of them are unlocked. Now the base clock speeds are a bit different with the 7700K coming in with a 4.2 gigahertz base clock to the 7740X's 4.3 gigahertz base clock. There's also a TDP difference. The 7740X comes in with a 112 watt TDP, whereas the 7700K comes in with a 91 watt TDP. Now the 7740X is socket 2066. That's why it's so huge and it requires an X299 motherboard, whereas the 7700K is a lot smaller and that will go in your Z270 motherboards. And there's also uh, a difference in that the 7700K still has onboard an onboard GPU, whereas there is no iGPU with the 7740X, which means you lack things like quick sync, and if you get into trouble, like your GPU breaks, you won't be able to get by just running on integrated graphics. So that will be a letdown for some people. Now let's talk about the test rigs then. So I wanted to keep these very similar. So they all ran the same memory at 3000 megahertz for all the tests. The same GPU, the Strix 1080 Ti, because some of you guys thought my GTX 1080 was holding the CPUs back. So I wanted to disprove that once and for all. And they were using the same uh, Noctua cooler, the NHU12S, which I think is quite a good middle of the range cooler that most people could get. A nice 120 millimeter fan uh, air cooler like that, rather than everybody always running super, super high end liquid coolers, which um, many people out there won't be able to afford one of those. So for the 7740X, I use the Gigabyte Gaming 7 X299 motherboard. And let me tell you, it was uh, very tricky. So, first of all, I wanted to put it in my uh, personal rig, which is X99. So I thought upgrading from X99 to X299 would be very, very straightforward. However, Windows had a fit. It wouldn't you know, go in. There was lots of problems there, so I couldn't do it. Another thing is, is that my power supply kept clicking. Um, <laughs> You know, like there was a short somewhere and I couldn't figure out where because everything was grounded. I was just pulling my hair out and it, basically what it was is that this motherboard features two 8-pin CPU power connectors. Now, if you run both of them with the 7740X, for some reason it seems to be creating a short and I'm not sure why. I pulled out the right hand one and sure enough everything booted up. So I don't know what was going on there. I checked in the manual, it didn't say anything about it. So it was just something interesting to know. Another thing to note is that I was having USB 3.0 issues like crazy. It was kicking out all my devices, so I just had to avoid them entirely. Even when I updated the BIOS, it didn't seem to help anything there. One other thing is that uh, you'll lose a lot of the features of this motherboard by using this CPU, the 7740X. For example, there's no quad channel memory support with this CPU, so you will just have to use the memory slots on the right hand side of the motherboard, and you lose a bunch of other features as well, but yeah, it's it's a funny thing, this CPU. But the 7700K is not very funny, um, <laughs> not in that way anyway, it doesn't muck you around. Very straightforward on the Z270, uh, the one I was using was the ASRock Fatality K6, which is a very solid um, uh, motherboard there. And when it came to testing, they were both fine. They both ran through all the testing just fine at their stock speeds. And then I decided to overclock them to see how high I could get them up to. So the 7740K, uh, the 7700K I should say. The name's just confusing to me, sorry. Um, this went up to 4.9 gigahertz. Pretty respectable. I think most people could achieve that with this CPU. Both of these CPUs are engineering samples, by the way. So that's pretty respectable. The 7740X did achieve a higher overclock. I got this guy up to 
uh, 5.1 gigahertz, so 200 megahertz higher than the 7700K. As far as temperatures go, uh, when they were on their stock settings uh, running XTU, they went up to like mid to high 60s. But once they were overclocked, boy, did they get hot. Uh, they were both running to mid to high 90s, although I didn't see any thermal throttling. So keep that in mind. They got very close to it, but I never actually saw any thermal throttling. So that was a good thing to see. Now let's get into the benchmarks in. Because uh, that's what, what you guys want to see here. So I did the stock speeds and the overclock speeds for all these benchmarks. It's a big mix of uh, synthetics and uh, some games thrown in there as well. So I hope you guys like it. Let's jump in and see how these two CPUs perform. So you see those uh, synthetic tests I ran, all the ones at the start, remained pretty uh, consistent for the most part. Handbrake was a little bit funny, but for the most part they were pretty consistent. The results came in where I thought they would come in, considering how similar these two CPUs are to each other. However, when we get to the games, that all changes. I'm getting really weird results, and I triple check these results. I ran each of these benchmarks three times at each resolution to make sure I didn't get weird outlier results. Um, I've been trying to think of why I got the results I did with this 7740X up in one game and then down in the next. I have no idea why. Deus Ex seemed to be pretty consistent, although that was at DX12, so maybe that made a difference. I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, these results are really, really weird, so if you guys have any ideas of what could have been causing it, let me know in the comment section down below, because I sure don't. Which brings us now to the conclusion, and what do I make of this new CPU, the 7740X? So it's basically a 7700K, which goes in an X299 motherboard and overclocks a little bit better with no iGPU. The fact that it requires the X299 motherboard, which is going to be much more expensive than a Z270, uh, yet it can't take advantage of any of the f additional features that motherboard provides is very strange to me why Intel has made this CPU in the first place. I really don't understand it. Um, I, I've read around, I've watched other people's videos to see what they had to say, and no one seems to have a definitive answer as to why this CPU exists. And neither do I. I'm sorry guys, if that makes the video confusing, I am sorry, because I am confused. I don't know where this fits in. People will say, well Kevin, it's because you can get the CPU, get your X299 motherboard, and then later on, you could buy something like the 7900X, you know, while you're saving up for it, you still got this CPU to get you by. I understand that, 
But it just still doesn't make sense to me why anyone would do that. Why wouldn't you just save up your money in the first place and buy a CPU like the 7900X, which can take full advantage of all the additional features you get with your X299 motherboard? Because as it stands, most of you guys, if you were to buy the CPU and buy an X299 motherboard, the motherboard might end up being more expensive than the CPU, and that's never a good situation. Your CPU should always be more expensive than your motherboard. So I don't know where this fits. I really don't know why the CPU exists, and that's pretty much all I have to say. If I had to pick out of these two CPUs, and we're bringing price into it as well, I would definitely pick the 7700K, because even though these CPUs are coming in at a similar price point, the motherboard, the Z270s, are going to be much cheaper. And at least then you have a CPU that uses everything on the motherboard. There's not like all this stuff left over. So yeah, if I was picking out of them, I would just pick the 7700K. And I don't know why the 7740X even exists. If you guys know, if you've had a revelation and you can tell me why the CPU exists, let me know in the comment section down below, down below because I really don't know. Now I thank you all for watching this video, please subscribe to my channel Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video and as always I'll see you guys next time.